Proposition 14 authorizes bonds to continue funding stem cell and other medical research. Initiative statute. Plain language. Borrow $7.8 billion to renew stem cell research funding. Let's kick off our first video of this series with a little trivia. Embryonic stem cells were first discovered in 1981 by Martin Evans. What living creature did he discover them in? We'll get to the answer a little later. If you've already emailed me and requested your free election voting aid, then you can use page three to keep track of your trivia questions. If not, keep track in your head or something. The background. Back in 2004, California voters passed Proposition 71. Prop 71 made it a constitutional right for scientists to do stem cell research, and it also authorized $3 billion in debt in the form of bonds that the state has been repaying with interest for many years. The funding prioritized human embryonic stem cell research. The proposition also established the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, or CIRM. CIRM is the agency that distributed the Prop 71 money to research facilities via grants and loans. The Independent Citizens Oversight Committee, the ICOC, was created to oversee the CIRM. Fast forward today, they're out of money. As for June 2020, CIRM had spent most of its Prop 71 funds. According to CIRM, about $30 million remains available for grants. As it nears the end of its funding, CIRM has been decreasing its staffing. The Institute currently employs 35 full-time staff, down from its peak of over 50 full-time staff. It plans to maintain some staff for the next few years as remaining projects are completed. So, through Prop 14, they are hoping to authorize more money to continue with this research. So, here we are. Before we go further, what are stem cells? Stem cells are cells in the body that have the potential to become any other kind of cell in the body. Your body uses them to create bone, to replace the lining of your intestine periodically, repair damaged tissue, etc. So scientists hope that by studying stem cells, they can create personalized cures for the sick by growing whatever organ or cell may be needed in the laboratory. Stem cell research is all about bringing this to fruition. Stem cells are most reliably harvested using human embryos, and the process results in the death of these embryos. An embryo is the beginning of a human life after conception. Figure 1 shows how CIRM has used its grant funding. Funded projects have involved conducting basic science research, such as laboratory research on stem cells, developing potential treatments, and undertaking clinical trials. Grant funds have also supported other activities, including construction of new research facilities and research internships for college students. The University of California has received the greatest amount of grant funding, followed by private nonprofit universities and institutions such as Stanford University. In addition to receiving a grant from CIRM, many grant recipients receive additional funding from other sources for their projects. Other common fund sources are industry contributions, private donations, and federal grants. Finally, some stem cell research can lead to new inventions, including new medical technologies and treatments. Proposition 71 required grant recipients who license or sell their inventions to share a portion of the resulting income with the state. To date, these inventions have provided a total of approximately $350,000 to the state's general fund. Long story short, Proposition 14 will authorize $7.8 billion of new debt in the form of bonds to continue funding stem cell research in California. The actual bond amount is $5.5 billion, but it becomes $7.8 billion after interest is paid. What does it do? Proposition 14 would use the bond money to fund stem cell research, including $1.5 billion for therapies and treatments for brain and nervous system diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and dementia, human clinical trials, treatments, and cures, and funding to state-funded labs that do research on human embryonic cells. It guarantees that no more than 7.5% of the funds be spent on operation costs. It expands the Independent Citizens Oversight Committee, which oversees the CIRM, from 29 members to 35 members. It also caps the number of bond-funded full-time CIRM employees at 85. CIRM is already tasked with medical research funding, research standards, and facilities grants. Prop 14 would add the charge to improve access and treatment and cures. Finally, this would establish training opportunities for students at the California State University and the California Community Colleges, as well as providing a small share for helping to establish and support facilities focused on research and clinical trials. For some types of grants, CIRM would be required to ensure grant recipients are located across the state and prioritize applicants that offer matching funds. The proposition limits the amount of bonds the state could sell to $540 million per year, thereby spreading out the bond sales over at least 11 years. The first five years after the proposition is approved, the state would make interest payments using funds from the bond sales, thereby reducing the amount of bond funds available for research projects. Beginning January 1, 2026, the state would no longer use funds from bond sales to make interest payments. Instead, the state would make remaining debt payments from the general fund. Most notably, the proposition makes several changes intended to improve patient access to stem cell treatments. 
The proposition allows CIRM to hire up to 15 full-time employees specifically for developing policies and programs relating to improving access to and affordability of treatments for patients. The Institute would be allowed up to 70 full-time employees for other operational purposes. A new advisory working group of experts would support CIRM's governing board in these matters. Further, any invention-related revenue that is deposited into the general fund would be used to help pay for patients' regenerative medicine treatments. Did you get all that? Real plainly, if this passes, Prop 14 will spend $7.8 billion conducting research on stem cells, developing treatments and cures for diseases using stem cells, and developing programs to make stem cell-related treatments and cures available to Californians. And now the answer to our trivia question. Embryonic stem cells were first discovered in 1981 by Martin Evans. What living creature did he discover them in? The answer? Mice. If you answered correctly, you get one point. You can keep score of all the trivia questions you get correct if you so desire. The free Daryl Johnson Show Voting Aid includes a place for you to keep track of these as well. Email me for your free copy at thedarylljohnsonshow at gmail.com. Fiscal Impact The fiscal impact of Prop 14 would be $7.8 billion of debt over the next 30 years. Secondarily, there would be an unknown amount of revenue that would come from new inventions and also an unknown impact if Prop 14 results in new treatments for state health care patients. The CIRM is working every day to provide healing and peace to California's sick and ailing population. They want to help women and children in need by providing therapy and joy. But forget about them for a moment. We here at the Daryl Johnson Show Laboratories need money immediately to engineer new research on future California state elections. Our scientists need your support to study this phenomenon we know as doofuses in the voting booth and eliminate it. Purchase your bond at paypal.me slash the Daryl Johnson Show or patreon.com slash the Daryl Johnson Show to help prevent doofuses from voting in a booth in your community. Remember, doofuses are no big deal until they vote on your city's ballot. From Yes on Prop 14. Nearly half of all California families include a child or adult with medical conditions who could benefit from stem cell research treatments and cures. Prop 14 provides continued funding to help treatments, advance clinical trials, and achieve new scientific breakthroughs for California's patients with cancer, diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, HIV AIDS, ALS, MS, sickle cell disease, lung disease, kidney disease, bubble baby disease, age-related blindness, genetic blindness, epilepsy, stroke, schizophrenia, autism, and other medical health and brain conditions and infectious diseases like COVID-19. California's original stem cell funding, which runs out this year, has already led to significant <coughs> has already led to significant progress in the development of treatments and cures, including 92 FDA-approved clinical trials for chronic disease and injuries, over 2,900 medical discoveries, and demonstrated benefits for patients and research on chronic diseases. Success stories of California's patients treated include. A high school student paralyzed in a diving accident has regained upper body function. A mother blinded by a genetic disease is regaining her eyesight. A cure was discovered for a fatal disease that causes children to be born without functioning immune systems. FDA approved treatments for two types of fatal blood cancers. Hear more from patients at www.yeson14.com success. Supported by over 70 patient advocate organizations, a yes vote on Prop 14 is endorsed by the University of California, Nobel Prize winners, leading patient and medical science advocates, and more than 70 patient advocate organizations, including all these people. It increases patient access and affordability, dedicates the Treatment and Cures Accessibility and Affordability Working Group experts to dramatically expand access to clinical trials and new therapies, make treatments and cures more affordable for Californians, and provide patients, their families, and caregivers with financial assistance, economic jobs and recovery stimulus. Funding research for new therapies and cures is from bonds, not a tax. New revenues, economic activity, and jobs are generated by funding what will contribute to California's economic recovery. There is no state bond payments during the first five years, and supporting California's stem cell program will only cost the state an average of less than $5 per person annually. It ensures strict accountability and transparency. California's controller chairs the Citizens Financial Account Oversight Committee, which reviews independent financial and performance audits of the funding institution. The institute complies with California's Open Meeting Act, Public Records Act, and Political Reform Act. 
these new treatments and cures could restore health and reduce health care costs for Californians. California funding is essential. Funding from Washington, D.C. is unpredictable and unreliable. Prop 14 builds on California's progress to date, helping to accelerate medical breakthroughs out of the lab and into clinical trials, where they can help improve and save patients' lives, says Dr. Adriana Padilla in Fresno. From No on Prop 14. As you can see from the opposition, proponents are attempting to minimize the cost of this initiative. The total cost is actually $7.3 billion, a huge sum during this moment of economic crisis with soaring unemployment and budget shortfalls. We can't afford to waste billions in the middle of an economic crisis with soaring unemployment and budget shortfalls in the tens of billions of dollars. We don't have the money to burn. We simply cannot afford the $5 billion that Prop 14 is asking for. And that's on top of the nearly $3 billion this troubled state agency has spent over the last 15 years with poor results. Don't believe the economic impact numbers from the proponents of Prop 14. That impact includes more than $100 million in grants to private companies headquartered in other states, more than $2.4 million in salary over the past decade to the part-time vice chairman of the board, a former California legislator who is neither a doctor nor a medical scientist. Outrageous. After an extensive analysis of spending by the state agency handing out billions in grants, the San Francisco Chronicle included the predicted financial windfall has not materialized. Only a few federally approved therapies have resulted. Prop 14 funds bureaucracy with serious problems. Some have questioned the integrity and independence of the state agency overseeing these funds. The Little Hoover Commission branded Robert Klein, the former chairman of the agency's board, a lightning rod for calls for more accountability. The Center for Society and Genetics in Berkeley has concluded that none of the flaws in the original stem cell initiative have been addressed in Prop 14. In fact, they conclude the problems are even worse. Others can do the job better. The National Institute of Health provides $1.5 billion a year in grants to fund the same type of research. Private investors and companies, including many in California, have made great strides in using stem cells to cure disease, including private funds, not tax dollars. And don't be misled by the handful of grants this agency has made in recent months to researchers working on COVID-19. It's an obvious attempt, after spending billions on other priorities, to mislead voters in the middle of this pandemic. Prop 14 means higher taxes, layoffs, or both. Paying back Prop 14's cost of $7.8 billion could mean huge tax increases at a time when our economy is on its knees, or laying off thousands of nurses and other heroes who do the real work of keeping California healthy. Vote no on Prop 14. Independent experts and news outlets have questioned the management and transparency record of the state bureaucracy that would spend the billions of dollars authorized by Prop 14. The federal government and private investors are spending billions to find cares. The state of California taxpayer has done enough. Medical research is important. We all agree there's a need to find cures and treatments for diseases afflicting so many, but Prop 14 is not the answer. Before we get to my opinion, check out the info box below to find information on getting a free Daryl Johnson Show voting aid and taking the 2020 election quiz to become a certified non-doofus voter. I look at issues like this on three levels. One, will it solve an important problem? Two, is it appropriate? And three, is it moral? In my mind, the benefits of Prop 14 are obvious. Potentially beneficial medical research done right here in California, and it appears to have great potential to bring healing and health to Californians of the future. Okay, that's simple. It, it solves an important problem. Is it appropriate? Here, I'm split. I would accept the state government using state funds to do something that would be so beneficial to mankind in the future. My issue is how they want to fund it. California has a $202 billion budget, but somehow we need to borrow money for everything. If they would just put it in the budget, I wouldn't have an objection. We are clearly heading toward hard times, and I'm not interested in further compromising the future with debt. Finally, is it moral? And this is where things get kind of sticky. Whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, we all assign some value to life, and that's why it's illegal to throw your loved ones in the trash after they die, or why you can't feed your stillborn baby to farm animals after you confirm it's not alive. 
If you're pro-choice, you probably still have a sliding scale as to when it becomes immoral to kill human life. A fully functional adult? No. Terminally ill or elderly adult? Maybe. A child? No. A baby? No. A fetus? Depends. An embryo? Maybe. If you're pro-life, things are a little less gray, but still grayish when talking about an embryo that is the size of a head of a needle. And then there's the fact that research uses embryos that are already going to be destroyed anyway, whether they're used for research or not. So why not use it for research, I guess. But then on the other hand, you wouldn't kill a dying infant for research, would you? So it's kind of murky. If you vote yes on Prop 14, you are voting to authorize California to borrow $7.8 billion to continue stem cell research. If you vote no on Prop 14, the current arrangement will end and this research will no longer be publicly funded. This is a very mixed and conflicted situation for me. I mean, I already expressed that I don't like the debt aspect. Maybe I can get over that. That part is up in the air. But more importantly, I don't have a solid grounding on the morality of this. And so I'm going to refrain from taking a public stance. The Daryl Johnson Show says, do your best on Prop 14.